Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So if you caught Saturday's video, we did a full shop tour and interview with my friend John, the owner of Worldwide Machining and Welding. And we covered a lot of stuff. Um, basically his business is shutting down. Um, he went from a facility, a very large facility of uh, close to 50 employees or maybe over 50 employees down to seven in over the last eight years just because the economy in our region is so terrible. A um, lot of businesses closing up, a lot of industry just shutting down or, or just moving out altogether. Um, so, you know, it went from a, having all this work to nothing in the matter of about seven or eight years. Um, you know, we can't blame this on COVID. We can't really blame it on the administration. Um, this is all this region. Um, you know, and I've said this a million times, this region is depressed, extremely depressed. Um, there's not much left. So in this video, I'm just gonna talk about my personal experiences in this region, what I've gone through, what I've dealt with, and try to give you guys an, a little background on how things are really, really are in this region. I mean, they're, they're really tough. So if you're here for a machining video, I apologize, this is not it. We're just doing a follow-up of what John and I talked about and what I have personally experienced in business in this region. So we're gonna try to do this without me rambling and, and going off on a tangent and because and, I, I, this, I love this region. I love it here, I absolutely do. I don't wanna be anywhere else. I absolutely hate winter, but I love it here. Um, I've been all over this country. I've seen so many places. There's, there's one or two places I wouldn't mind being, but it, it, they're too heavily populated for me. Um, I love it here. This is home. Um, I grew up 50 miles south of here, and this is where I settled. This is where I'm happy. We built a great home, great, you know, my business is doing okay, considering. Um, we just love it here. And so I'm gonna, let's, let's first address a couple of the comments on John's video. Um, we had a comment about if he's got 850 customers, how is he going out of business? Overhead, it's all about overhead. That facility that he's in is designed for the 40 or 50 guys in the shop, not for the five that he's got in the shop right now. You cannot sustain that. Even, and, and those guys are just barely busy. That, that's the scary part. The work dried up. There isn't work flowing in like there was. It's really slowed down. So they're putting out work, but it's not covering the daily operating expenses. You know, power, heat. Heat is a huge one in this region. Um, you know, we talked, John and I talked in the video about people that live without heat. That happens a lot here. I'm not joking, a lot. And there's people that their entire paycheck go to cover their heat bill. Um, it's, it's crazy. It's, like I keep saying, depressed, very depressed. Um, but your daily operating expenses, electricity, heat, insurance, um, you know, material, things like that. There are so many expenses in this business that people don't understand. And you know, it's one thing if you're doing this out of your garage, I guarantee you don't have insurance. Um, just my insurance costs me a lot of money every year. I mean, I have very good insurance because I'm required to for some of the customers I work with. I bet you John's insurance is even higher than that, higher, higher uh, premium, um, coverage. You know, he's gotta be $25 million an incident even more, I'm gonna guess. Um, I've seen that multiple times in, in these really big shops because of the places they work in. So that insurance alone has gotta be a killer. Um, I mean, for me, it's a huge amount. Um, my shop, my shop is, I've got 75 active customers. All of them bring me work, you know, it's every one of them, all amazing, amazing customers, wonderful to work with, just really great people and it's not steady, it's very staggered. I mean, I might have a few weeks here where I'm so busy I don't sleep, and then I've got you know a month of nothing. 
by myself, that's sustainable because my electric bill is pushing $1,000 a month. I can make that. You know, my insurance is a lot, <laughs> pushing $1,000 a month. Um, you know, it's things like that. Operating expenses are huge in this business. And if you're doing it right, doing it for a commercial, it's very expensive. A lot of you asked why he's moving to California. His wife is from there. That's where her family is, her friends, everything. That's why he's going to California. Um, and like he said in the video, he wouldn't be able to, you know, he wouldn't have made it without her. I'm in the same boat. I wouldn't have made this without my wife. Um, the last several years have been very tough um, in this region. Like I said, things are dying. Things are drying up. It's very depressed. And I should have gave up several times, but I didn't. I didn't, you know, I just don't want to. And she kept pushing me forward. Um, she's, you know, we put everything into this business. You know, she got her own career. She's an RN, um, works at one of the local hospitals. She's very good at what she does and um, just absolutely loved by everybody in the hospital. So, but we put everything into keeping this shop going because there's nothing, nobody else uh, in the last, since I started the shop in 2012, I know of eight shops that have closed up maybe more, uh, I had to think about that. Six of them were good friends of mine that I met over the years and built a good friendship with. And when they retired, or uh, one of them, he uh, quit because of health problems. When they closed up, I got their customers. They passed off the work to me because we worked back and forth and they saw the, the quality I was putting out was you know, right there with theirs. They were very impressed with what I was doing and trying to do here. Um, and they wanted to see me succeed. And I honestly don't know how those guys were surviving off of the work they had. I got all six of those guys' work, five or six shops, and it's still barely enough to sustain, you know, me here as a one-man show. And now I've got my apprentice, Connor, which I'm doing that. I'm taking that money that I'm paying him out of my own pocket to help him, help him into the future, because I think this is a great thing. And I've been thinking about possibly bringing on a second kid. Connor is going to be leaving me um, in June, and I'd like to keep this going because it is a great program. The local high school shop teacher, him and I have had discussions about this, and he would love to place more kids out here with me and and so they can learn and, and Connor's bounced around all these machines. He's run so many different things. He's done a lot of different things. Um, and I hope that sets him up for life. And in, in video with John, I told him the best advice was to get out of this region. That's true. If you want to succeed, get out. Um, I had tried, to, I tried really hard for the last six years now to try to grow the business. And it's just the last year that I finally decided that I, it's not gonna happen here. It's just impossible. Uh, there's just nothing left, no industry. And I worked, I, I first reached out to the Washburn County Economic Development Corporation. They work with small businesses to help them grow. They just passed me off to another agency. They said, ah, we can't help you. There's nothing we can do and uh, passed me off, pa you know, and that one passed me off, and that one passed me off. The Wisconsin Small Business Development Center was the only one, uh, the, the one out of Eau Claire, not the one out of Superior. Those guys dropped the ball. They refused to make, you know, return phone calls. So I got a hold of the Eau Claire one, which I'm not in their jurisdiction, but the way I was dealt with up there, um, no way. I wouldn't deal with them ever again. Uh, but Eau Claire, those guys were amazing. Um, they helped me. We gained a few new customers from the work I did with them. Um, we did some advertising campaigns. Um, just great people to work with. Um, I worked, I tried, I reached out to the Wisconsin, Manu uh, UW Stout, Wisconsin's or Manufacturers Outreach Center. And this is a program that works with manufacturers, uh, machine shops and such. And the first guy that came out to talk to me, he just basically was not impressed, thought I was an idiot. Um, you know, I don't, you don't have CNC equipment. How are you ever gonna survive? How can you, how can you do this stuff without CNC? 
Well, easily. I've been doing it for several years. Um, so one of his colleagues reached out to me and we talked a bit and, and he tried to help me along and we, you know, gave me some great pointers. But a friend of his was a manufacturer's business coach. He does it for, for money. Um, and he said, well, I'll just meet with you and we'll talk about you know, what you've gone through and what you could do. He says, I'll help you however I can. And um, we met, spent two hours together. And he says, well, do you want my absolute honest professional opinion and my recommendation for you? And I says, yeah. I says, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. And he says, the best advice I can give you to grow your business and succeed is to move out of Spooner. Pack up and move anywhere else, anywhere. Um, so I don't wanna do that. I love it here. Um, we built a very nice life for ourselves here. I, and there's the customers I do have here, like I said, I've been amazing people to work with. Great customers, great companies. Um, just, it's been, it's been good. Um, but like I said, my wife has helped to support us, you know, her, her career, and it's, it's very tough here. So I've reached out to our congressman and gotten nowhere, um, gotten a response that, that there's nothing wrong in that region. Everything's just fine. Um, yeah, sure it is. That's Tom Tiffany, if anybody's wondering. And um, in fact, I, I sent a link to the video I did with John about his shop closing up to Tom Tiffany and I have not heard back. Um, and I doubt I will, doubt any of us will. So um, it's been very tough here. Very, very tough to start and run a business. Um, there is another machine shop in town that um, when I first started out, they screwed me over. They tried to, tried to basically squash me so I wasn't a problem. And uh, I quickly figured that out. Well, they sold a few years back to a bigger company. And I figured all oh, new management and everything. They reached out to me asking if I would take on some work for them. And they pretty much did the same thing. Tried to, I mean, they, they did everything they could to sabotage this. And I figured it out quick. And I just said, nope, we're done. Done with you. We're done all around. Um, I've tried advertising in our local newspaper. This is a, this is a good one. Um, and uh, the new, local newspaper, the shop that I was, that I had problems with, the newspaper told me, oh, well, you're their, their competition. We won't work with you. There's nothing we will do for you um, because you're their competition. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot of weird things going on here, a lot of corruption. Um, you know, that's something John and I didn't talk about on camera is the corruption in this region of the government. Um, and I just don't want to keep going I, on, on, on this uh, tangent. Um, <laughs> but like I said, this is very tough here. That's, this is some of my personal experiences here. It's been very difficult. Um, it's, it's very hard to, to survive here in Northern Wisconsin. And it's like nobody cares. Nobody cares that, that there's no industry here. Nobody cares that industry is pulling out. Nobody cares that cl businesses are closing. Um, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, we started seeing bars and restaurants in the, in the region. In, that in my local area, I watched them before COVID shut down and disappear. Bars and restaurants that, you know, we're doing okay. You know, they just can't make it. Um, it it's sad, it's very sad because so many of my, my friends and customers in this region, we love the region, we love the area, but there's nothing here to sustain it long term. Um, it's it's very sad. Oh, I hope I didn't ramble too much. I hope I didn't offend any of my customers. If you're watching, um, you know all you guys, all of my customers, you're great customers. I couldn't ask for better. Some of you have become pretty close friends with. Um, it's and we are all in this together. This region is very very difficult. Um, it's it's almost. I mean, it's to the point where it's almost unsustainable anymore, but we're here because we love the region and we want to see it succeed. And I don't know what's going to make that happen. Um, 
I had the discussion with the, you know, the shop teacher, all the business owners, you know, there's so much potential here, but they're not tapping into it and helping this region grow. Um, I've been all over this country and I've never been in another area that was so economically depressed as this region. Um, it's sad, it's very sad, but I'm gonna keep pushing along. I'm not going anywhere, I'm not giving up. Um, I, I've had times where I should have gave up and I came close, but you know, the customers that I have still that I have and that I hopefully can get um, eventually, I want to keep them going. I want to see this region succeed. I want to see growth here, and I want to see a future here um, for my wife and I and our you know my stepkids and for their kids. And you know, there's there's got to be some kind of future here. Um, I don't know what it's going to take. It's sad. It's very sad. Um, but I'm going to keep pushing forward. That's all you can do. And with that, we're going to get back to normal machining on Saturday. Till next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.